Chapter 5 The old dry branches I set outside the window last night were broken this morn. It was the bear again. Not that I didn't love the living creatures here, but that stupid bear was quite another thing. He ruined my property and stole food. He broke my first oven, the one that took weeks to build, and ran off with my smoked meat and rabbit blanket, though I did not know what he could possibly have needed with a blanket. Why can't bears be vegetarians? He was rotten, and I despised him. He was cute to view when a cub, but now that he'd grown a bit, all he did was harass me several times a year for weeks on end then disappear until the next haunt. Oh well, at least I was safe. It was good that Terran prepared me for these things. Otherwise, I would not have known to construct windows using existing trees to keep that furry menace out. I looked more closely at one of the claw marks. How did I sleep through that? Marking my home as his territory. Ugh, what a pest. It must be the raspberries. That's what he was after last time, too. Those dark ones from on top of the hill. Remember, Carmella? Carmella skittered into the kitchen and climbed up the cabinet in record time, then greeted me at the window. I was still examining the outer structure. There were no dents in the wall beneath the grass. It held. We'll have to try the water hemlock raspberry mix again. Maybe he'll eat the poison this time, I said to the uninterested lizard. I'll have to cage you again for a few days, honey. Carmella nearly fell off the edge of the sill, chasing after a bug that was faster than her tongue. Sorry, Taryn. I know you wouldn't approve of killing a creature other than for food, but I just can't have this bear in my world. He's crazy. I'll keep a pot on the fire and scald him with boiling water the next time he comes at night. I'll throw it out the window. That's what we'll do, Carmella. That'll teach him to mark our home. Hungry for breakfast, I swept Carmella up from the sill and carried her inside. Precious goose eggs were on the menu. It grated at me while I ate. There were only two things that scared me in this place, the cougars and that stupid bear. But the cougars seemed more afraid of me than I am of them. That bear is afraid of nothing. I could have done just fine here without him, thank you very much. I loved the other animals, but why did the vision fold have to send bears? What were they good for, anyway? Would someone come soon? I did not even want to think what it would be like if the female reproduced again. Bears would be running amok. I'd have no choice but to find a way to kill them then. It would be much to handle alone. I'd feel safer if Taryn's hunting armory had surfaced. But thus far, I had no luck. If the others had survived, we'd have found it together by now. I have you, though, don't I, sweetie, I said to Carmella. When I untied the chirping cricket sack and threw her a live one, she scarfed it down in one gulp, then skittered under my bed and made herself comfortable. She settled there for the rest of the morning. The clouds crawled in and stayed their wings. It rained all day. I washed up inside rather than bathing in the stream. After this morning, I didn't want to risk running into the bear. He usually slept mornings on days he came menacing, but I could never be too sure when he would rear his ugly head on days like this morn. Above all else, I learned to practice safety where he was concerned. I finished the new floor mat for the room and spread it out from the center to the edges. It lay flat enough. There was one lumpy area, but that would mat down within a few days. It smelled like fresh hay and reminded me of the wheat room back home. It was Monday. I hoped it wouldn't rain tomorrow. 
Carmela didn't enjoy the rain like I thought something so closely resembling a salamander should. She actually seemed to despise it. So when it rained on Tuesdays, I had to walk to the hill and wait alone. As absurd as it sounded, I was more comforted when she was with me, mostly during the few weeks a year when the bear showed himself. While I was sure a lizard couldn't protect me from a bear, there was still something quite reassuring about knowing, or at least hoping, there was a living creature nearby who cared for me. I had passion for this place, this clean world. But on days like today, I grew a bit weak in spirit. I knew it was simple loneliness, but I always seemed to feel it more when that pesky bear came calling. Now, for some reason, he'd marked my house as his own. Stupid creature. Please send him tomorrow, Taryn. A mail for physical strength. Where was he? I peered out into the night three times before I untied the skins and let them drape over the window. I did not hear him. The bear wasn't out there. With cloud cover tonight, it was pitch black already, and I was tired from the wet day. Carmela lay sprawled next to me on the bedding, all four bumpy legs stretched out. She was a scrawny little thing. Tomorrow's Tuesday, I said as I blew out the flame of the clay lamp and closed my eyes. 